they're too intelligent. They're, what the fuck are they going to be doing with, with Kike Camarena? That's a DEA. They, they don't even like the DEA. Right. Well, uh, that's what I'm saying. He was he, good at his job, and he ended up, he, he could have hypothetically ended up in the middle of it. Yeah, he was a horrible. very good agent, and it was a DEA operation. Can we talk about this Brian Denner guy? Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. <laughs> Again, you're not you're not helping your case here. But Brian Denner, you were telling me about him last night. He's An al allegedly fellow. still in the CIA. Like, I guess you never no, really no, no, leave. He... He's fucking around overthrowing some no, governments. No, 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 no. <laughs> he's he's a consultant. He's he's got huh. a consulting firm. They they do some consulting in Africa. Huh. He's a very colorful person. He's a tough guy. But he was he, CIA for a long time. Yes, he he's come out publicly and said it that he was a CIA operative for many years, and the reason that Jesse Fink ran into him because he commented something on a post that Jesse Fink did while he was doing the research on Alberto Cecilia Falcon. He says, "I know Alberto Cecilia Falcon because I was with him in the early years in Mexico." Brian Dennard. No, no, he's he's he's. That's when he allegedly went rogue, though. I don't know if he was rogue or not rogue or who he he was working for, but he did meet Alberto and became a very good friend of Alberto's. No, I'm saying close. that's when Alberto went rogue. Oh and yeah, Brian uh, saying yeah, he was yeah, there. He was on already, behalf of the CIA at the time. He, he was already running the Tijuana cartel, Alberto. Right, and Brian is friends with him. Yes, as a member of the. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Do with that what you will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very interesting fellow. Uh, I'm in touch with him a lot. We've become friends. Well, a, a big question surrounding CIA and cartels at, at the dawn of this thing is the aforementioned Kiki Camarena thing, and I. I I've never uh, heard The CIA of it. had nothing to do with that. You think they had nothing to do with that? No. That okay. was just a fuck up. Caro, they shouldn't. They, back then, nobody knew that you couldn't kill a DEA agent. The DEA agency was not what it used to be now. They didn't okay? know. Okay. <laughs> These guys were just a bunch of flip floppers starting. Uh, yeah. Uh, the DEA, they just flipped out and and took a, made a decision that was not a good one. And they came back to haunt them forever. They killed Kiki Camarena, eh, Caro Quintero, and Felix Gallardo. The CIA had nothing to do with it. Right. So this is what we had talked about with, with Rafa earlier, because we know that he was involved in that. My my oh. buddy Danny Jones had in Felix Rodriguez, though, for a podcast recently. Felix, and Felix, that was all bullshit. Yeah, Felix, Felix said he wasn't there. nothing to do with it. So that, that had been the story for a while, that, that he had been undercover on behalf of the CIA and was in the cartel and then Kiki was brought to him and he was required to torture him and do that, which this is, this is where people's brains explode on some stuff, but I don't know what was going on. Let's just hypothetically say for a minute that is what happened and you say it's not. We'll get to that. But I think about this a lot because I'm like, damn, Kiki Camarena was actually really good at his job. He ended up in the middle he of- He busted a buffalo. Right. That big farm. Right. He ended up in the middle of the most powerful yeah. people because he was, again, he was a good agent. And he suffered. And and he suffered. So he gets then caught up with them. Like you said, they didn't think anything like killing a DA agent. And let's just say, hypothetically, Felix was there and he was working on behalf of the CIA and then was the guy who did this. I think about this a lot because I'm like, okay, what if the CIA had some sort of 10, 20 year operation going on that had serious national security implications, right? And they had someone deep cover like this who needed to keep his cover. And unfortunately, and that's a really light word to put on this, but unfortunately, this really good DEA agent gets caught in the middle of it, and the decision is, do we break our cover and blow this entire long mission, or does this guy become a sacrificial lamb? That's a tough – like a lot of people at home, including me emotionally, are like, oh, you break cover and you make sure you protect your own. But it's – from an intelligence standpoint, I get why that's like this tough decision, but you're saying it's irrelevant because that's not what it was. Back then – you know, what what the Mexicans were doing with the pot, they were crossing pot and they were crossing pot and, you know, a Gallardo and 
uh, Rafa and uh, the the Arellano brothers in Tijuana. They were doing the pot, and then Mata Ballesteros introduces them to co cocaine, and they had internal conflicts because Rafa never wanted to go into cocaine. That is true. But eventually, they all went into cocaine. But that was a clusterfuck among among them all. The CIA wasn't really involved in that shit. The CIA got involved in the Contra shit. They, mm. they, I mean, when they get involved, they get involved, and they get involved proactively. They're not just... Uh, the, the CIA doesn't take... Uh, is not the uh, small partner in the deal. They, they take control of the whole sure. thing, and that's the whole thing that happened in Nicaragua. There they were involved. Iran-Contra, you're saying? Yeah, the Iran-Contra. Sandinistas yeah, and all that? Yeah, with yeah. Barry Seal and all that. And that's, they got proactive on that one. But that whole, they don't, they're too intelligent. They're, what the fuck are they going to be doing with, with Kike Camarena? That's a DEA. They, they don't even like the DEA. Right. Well, uh, that's what I'm saying. He was good at his job and he ended up, he could have hypothetically ended up in the middle of it. Yeah. He was a horrible. very good agent and it was a DEA operation. The CIA wouldn't even, they don't, they don't want to get involved with the DEA and something like that. They ran their own show in Nicaragua, and they ran it from A to Z. Now, Felix was involved in, in, in going down there to Bolivia when they captured Che Guevara. Yes, yes. He was, uh, he he was, was the real McCoy. He was the guy running that, yeah. And he's, 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 he's the real deal. You okay. Know. Now, um, but that whole uh, CIA, I mean... You know, everywhere, you know, there was a war in Vietnam. So suddenly the Burmese Triangle becomes the number one producer of opium in the world. So suddenly there's a war in Afghanistan. And now Afghanistan is the largest opium producer in the world. I mean, the CIA, you know, they've been <laughs> transporting for years. I mean, wait, wait, I think uh, everybody back up. knows that. Back up. You're saying that at the I'm, sites of these wars, they are then responsible for transport. Well, what 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 is their incentive to do that? Well, money, obviously. You know, they have. Uh, you know, nobody knows their budget. They're the only agency, I think, that they don't have to disclose their budget. But I'm just. This is hypothetically. I mean, I I can't say this for a fact, but I mean. They were involved in the Iran-Contra. I mean, during the Vietnam War, the Burmese Triangle becomes the number one producer of opium. A lot of the opium, is, um, heroin is coming from there. Then Afghanistan breaks out, and Afghanistan becomes the number one producer of opium. I mean, it's, it's a Maybe theory. Think that's the, okay. Maybe they're involved. Maybe they're not. I mean, I don't know. But, Did you deal with them at all no, in your career? Not at all. Not at all. Do you think you may have dealt with them without knowing it? No, no. Why? What makes you so confident? Because I knew who I dealt with. I dealt with Mexicans, and that's it. I dealt yeah, with but Colombians. What if they're, what if they're assets? Colombians? No, 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 no. You're confident on. You seem very confident on that. I right? would, uh, yeah, I would say ninety-five percent, and leave that five percent for for giggles. But no, okay. I, I knew who I was dealing with, and. I think they're the kind of people that when they get involved, you, you kind of know they're involved. Sure. Okay. And once again, that's a theory. It's a theory that I personally think that, you know, could work for them. But I can't say I have proof or anything like that. It's just something that I, I think. Like Southern Air, I mean... Who owned Southern Air or Air America or all those companies? Supposedly, I don't know. Put up Southern Air. I think they're. So I'm linked. not familiar. Southern Air. Southern Air. Yeah, they were based in Miami, and they were. You know, I mean, Southern, shit like that. So it's Southern Air. Uh, was a global cargo carrier headquartered in Florence, Kentucky. It was the first airline to provide ACMI service for the wide body Boeing seven seven. Southern F Air out of Miami. On uh, November 17, 2021, Southern Air ceased operations upon its merger with Atlas Air. Is that the same one? Maybe not. This was in Miami. 
Southern Air, Miami based. It's Atlanta. This is Atlanta. Yeah, it's a different one. Try Southern Air, Miami Plane Company. Yeah, Southern Air Transport. Okay, here it is. Southern Air Transport, SAT, 1947 to 1998, based in Miami, Florida, was a cargo airline best known as a front company for the Central Intelligence Agency, 1960 to 73, and for its crucial role on the Iran-Contra scandal in the mid-1980s. If there's flies on you, they're paying rent. You 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 know your shit. That's good. I, I have no familiarity with this. Air America is another one. I mean, can, can it, we hit that, Alessi? Can we hit that full link? Let's see if it has like a like a section and called. It, and it's okay. Like I said, somebody's got to do it. Go down. <laughs> I mean, I, Go I don't. I, I, okay, Iran. All right, this is on the. This is on what's this called? Southern Air Transport page on <laughs> under Iran Contra affair as part of Oliver North's activities to trade arms for hostages with Iran. To support the Contra Rebellion in Nicaragua, Southern Air carried loads of U.S. weapons bound for Iran from the U.S. to Israel, and on the return flights carried weapons destined for the U.S.-backed right-wing Contra rebels in Nicaragua from Portugal. On 5 October 1986, a Southern Air Transport C-123K loaded with weapons failed to return from the scheduled drop to the Contras in Nicaragua. In charge of the operations was Felix Rodriguez. There he is. He was the logistics. <laughs> he was the logistics officer for airlifts of no. weapons and supplies from the Lapongo Air Base in El Salvador to the jungle hideouts of the con of the Contras. Rodriguez did not notify the Defense Department or the CIA, but rather attempted to get word about missing C-123K to Donald Gregg the National Security Advisor for Vice President George H.W. Bush. The shooting down of the SAT flight helped expose the Iran-Contra scandal. Logbooks retrieved from the wreckage linked SAT to a history of involvement with the CIA, cocaine, and the Medellin drug cartel. The logs documented several SAT flights to Barranquilla during October 1985. In the same time period, Wanda Palacios told the FBI that SAT was running drugs. She worked in the early 1980s for the Colombia's Medellin cartel and had direct knowledge of the cartel's dealings with the CIA and the Contras. She brought in testimony to U.S. Senator John Kerry. Wanda Palacios had witnessed in 1983 to 1985 in Barranquilla the arrival of SAT planes loaded with weapons for the cartel, which would then send them to the Contras. The planes would return to the U.S. loaded with cocaine. Palacio stated that Jorge <laughs> Luis Ochoa Vasquez himself explained to the Guns for Drugs deal with the CIA to supply the Contras. You've got good eyesight. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. It's a little small so, there, but... you know, like I said, somebody's got to do it, and it's out there. I mean, why not? I mean... It's... So you didn't... What, what I've been asking you was that you didn't see any involvement in your own dealings and you didn't see involvement in Mexico. But what's clear is that there was involvement, allegedly, between CIA and Pablo Escobar's Medellin cartel. Yeah. If I did it, why wouldn't they do it? I did, a lot of people didn't. I, I understand I mean, now. Okay, so you're saying because you're like a middleman running the logistics, obviously you're not the only one of your kind, so you're there are another cog on the wheel that has nothing to do with you, but doing the same thing. Yeah. It's like mm. arms dealers. Who's an illegal, who, who's the largest arms dealer in the world? The U.S. government. Mm -hmm. Who's an illegal uh, arms dealer? A guy that doesn't buy from the U.S. government <laughs> and sells to a client that the U.S. government sanctions they're all arms dealers one's approved one's not approved so drugs i mean it's a hell of a business it's a great business why was i in it because it's a great business so you think i'm the only guy that's gonna realize it's a great business and be involved no you know pharmaceuticals legal pharmaceuticals mm. that's probably worse than illegal pharmaceuticals you want to get rid of the cocaine business? Easy. Pass it on from the DEA. Pass it on. Give it to the Department of Agriculture. Give them $20 billion so they can go out and buy all the coca leaf in production. They buy it all. That leaves no coca leaf for any other group, office, export company in Colombia to export any cocaine. Because there's no coca leaf. The U.S. Department of Agriculture do you think it'd be it all. feasible to do that? It's hard, run it. you know. I mean, people say that Castaño, who was a paramilitary, they were trimming him for that purpose to 
act as a buyer's rep in Colombia, because obviously whoever does that is not going to be a very popular figure. They're going to want his head on a silver platter. But if you, just like United Fruit, when they wanted the price of banana to go up, they would buy all the banana in Central America. Nobody else would have banana. Banana exports would go down, price would go up. So if you have a guy with a paramilitary strong group of 10,000 armed men start buying up a lot of the coca leaf in production from Bolivia, Peru, and Colombia, and you start storing that, suddenly there's no cocaine for anybody. So there's you- no, when there's no cocaine on the street here in, in, in the United States, that creates another problem because there's a lot of people that live off that business. People that, if they do not have cocaine to sell, they still have to feed their families, and they may not take a job at a 7-Eleven or at a McDonald's to flip burgers. They may decide to go into your neighborhood and hijack your car and kidnap your daughter. Shit like that, that social shit, that just the domino effect that goes down. Look, um, right after they killed Pablo, Cali, put the word out. Carly Cartel. Carly Cartel put the word out that nobody works. We're not going to work. To to get in good with the government, we're not going to work. Right. right. Okay? We're not going to work. Some people didn't like that. I was working with a guy called Mono Endo, Claudio Endo, lunatic, psychopath. (laughs) But... Good business partner. <laughs> Since Pablo had gone down and Cali wasn't working, I, 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 w- I was going to continue to work. Cause then Mono, who was with the Cali cartel, told the, the old guys in Cali, fuck you. You guys already made your billions. I'm, I'm continuing to work. And he was a rough, he was a violent son of a bitch, Mono Endo. He continued working. I worked with him for a while. And uh, suddenly one day they came into his farm and they shot him up and he was in, you know, in the bathroom and they um, machine gunned the bathroom to hell and he was in it and he got popped full of holes. Mm. They killed him. But you see, you know, Cali, at that time there was no Coke available in Cali because they weren't working. Yeah, we just skipped that to like 1993, but yeah. That, that was after they killed Pablo. Right. Now you, I'm trying to think here, there, there, there's, there's two main threads that I think we really got to cover just because culturally people are aware of it and I want to see what, what you knew about it. But like we were talking about Kiki. After Kiki was killed and then found, there was a manhunt for Rafa Caro Quintero. Right. And he fled to Costa Rica where you had a home base. You had a macadamia farm there, right? Yeah. And you kept Costa Rica clean, meaning you didn't do anything out of Costa Rica so you could have that as like a front spot. Never. Okay. But you got a phone call to see if you would help him? Who called you? Doc called me and he said, you know, Rafa's in Costa Rica. What can we do for him? You know, he's hot. And uh, is there any way we can get him out of Costa Rica? And I tried. I made a couple phone calls, but it was nothing to be done there, at least not within my power. And I really didn't want to heat myself up mm. in Costa Rica. Uh, he, you know, he went to Costa Rica and he got caught there. And um, there was nothing I could do. But Doc was very good friends with with uh, Rafa, and he called me up to see if I could do something, but nothing I could do. Was there, did you have a thought there, though, that, like, this is pretty fucked up, what he did? Because this wasn't, like, killing a gangster I wasn't or even something. thinking about that. You didn't? No, I, you know, it was known that he, but remember, when they killed Kiki, uh, it didn't become that popular and it didn't come out in the news as much as it did later. Mm. It, it wasn't immediately that this whole thing blew up and it was... The media uh, hype came in a little later.